Hello, today we're going to look at a classic problem in dynamics and it involves something that we call an Atwood machine and all this is is a pulley so that's uh, what is represented by this big circle at the top of this diagram. It's a pulley with a string or a rope draped over it, over the top of it, and there is a mass connected up to either end of that string. We want to know a few things. Firstly, we just want to know how is this system going to evolve over time. In other words, how are the masses going to move? And also we're interested in what the tension force is going to be uh, in the string. Now, in order to make this problem a bit more tractable, we're going to make a few assumptions. So firstly, we are going to assume that there's no friction between the string and the pulley. And what this allows us to do is assume that the tensions on both sides of the pulley are the same. So there's going to be tension force, uh, let's say T, acting on the left part of the string, which is going to be equal to the tension force T acting on the right-hand side of the string. Now, we're also going to assume that the string itself doesn't have any mass, so we don't have to take into account the inertia or the weight of the string. Um, and we're going to assume that the string is inextensible, and what that allows us to do is say, if M2 moves down by some amount, then M1 has to move up by exactly the same amount because the distance along the string between M1 and M2 is kind of, it's fixed, right? So those are the assumptions we're going to make. Uh, let's see how we're actually going to do the calculations. Well, our general approach is going to be considering forces. And so a good start would be to sketch on all of the forces acting on the various parts of our system. So let's consider the mass M1 first. Well, of course, um, it is a, a massive object, so it has a weight. The weight is going to act straight downwards, and it's going to be M1 G, where G is the gravitational field strength. But then, of course, it's connected up to this string, right? The string has a tension in it, um, and we're going to call that T, and so the string is pulling up on M1 with a force of T. Now, as we said, because it's a smooth poly with no friction, we can say that there's the same tension T on the other side of the string pulling up on M1. M2, and of course M2 also has its own um, weight acting downwards, which is going to be M2g. Okay, so let's think about how the masses are going to move. Um, well, suppose that M2 is bigger than M1, then what you would expect is that M2 moves down, right, because M2 is the heavier one. Um, but then remember, because the string is inextensible, M1 has to move up by exactly the same amount that M2 moves down. So what we can do is draw in a little double arrow for acceleration here, label this A, and then say that if M2 is accelerating downwards with acceleration A, then M1 has to accelerate upwards uh, with exactly the same acceleration. So we've set up all our forces and uh, drawn in our accelerations. If we want to find the accelerations, then the way to do that is use Newton's second law, right? Because it relates accelerations to forces. So my abbreviation for Newton's second law is N2L. We're going to apply that first to mass 1. Okay, so Newton's second law applied to mass 1. What are we going to get? Force is mass times acceleration, right? That's what Newton's law, second law tells us. The mass times the acceleration is easy. It's just M1A. Um, and what is the force going to be? We're interested in the force in the direction of that acceleration. So we have a T pulling M1 upwards, right? That's why it's going to move upwards. But then we also have an M1G, the weight kind of opposing that upwards pull. So we get a minus sign because they're in opposite directions. Um, and there we go. There's our equation of motion for particle 1. So we can do exactly the same thing um, for the second uh, particle, the second mass, right? So mass times acceleration, this time it's just M2A. We have to be a bit careful because it's accelerating in the opposite direction. So this time, the force that is causing it to accelerate, that is kind of driving that acceleration, is actually the weight, right? Because it's accelerating downwards, and so <clears throat> the weight is the thing which is causing that downwards motion. So M2G, and this time the tension T is acting against um, that motion. So we get a minus sign in front of the T. Okay, so we've got two equations, one and two. I'm going to label them. It's basically a pair of simultaneous equations for the two unknown quantities, acceleration A and tension T. Now you'll notice that T has a positive sign in, the, in equation one and a negative sign in equation two, which... Uh, means that what we can do is actually just add those two equations together and the t's are going to cancel out. So on the left hand side you're going to have m1a plus m2a which we can factorize as m2 plus m1a, right? And on the right hand side you get t minus t, that cancels out, that's where we added them together, and then you get m2g minus m1g, 
um, which we can factorize as m2 minus m1g. So just rearrange this and we get acceleration a is m2 minus m1 over m2 plus m1g. Okay, so the acceleration depends on the difference between the two masses, right? Um, and so if m2 is bigger than m1, then acceleration is going to be positive, meaning if m2 is bigger than m1, the accelerations are in the directions that we've drawn them on. Um, so m2 is going to move downwards, so that's consistent with what we'd expect. If it's the other way around, and m1 is bigger than m2, then the numerator of this fraction would be negative. So the acceleration is going to be negative, implying that the accelerations are in the opposite direction to how we've drawn them. Again, that's what we would expect, right? Because if m1 is heavier than m2, then um, m1 is going to be the one that moves downwards. And finally, note that if m2 and m1 are exactly equal, the acceleration turns out to be zero because the system is perfectly balanced, right? So it's not going to move. So there you go, that's the acceleration. Uh, let's also figure out the tension, right? And to, to figure out the tension, we can use either of these equations, one or two. Um, I'm going to use equation one um, and just rearrange this, right, to make t the subject of this, um, this equation. And we get t is... Um, m1a plus m1g, um, so that can be factorized as m1 times a plus g. Okay, so what can we do with this? We just plug in the acceleration um, that we found uh, just now, right? So <clears throat> we are going to find that this simplifies to m1, I'm going to factorize out g because acceleration also has a factor of g. So we're going to get m1g times m2 minus m1 over m2 plus m1 uh, plus 1 from this g over here. Okay, so just one more step. We just we can simplify this um, this bracketed term a bit. Um, and m2 minus m1 over m2 plus m1 plus 1. Well, if you think of this 1 as m2 plus m1 over m2 plus m1, you can see the numerator of our new fraction is going to be m2 minus m1 plus m2 plus m1. The m1s cancel and you get 2m2 on the top. So putting that all together, um, the tension is going to be 2m1 m2 over uh, m1 plus or Let's write it, just to be consistent with the previous expression, we can write it as m2 plus m1, uh, and all of that multiplied by g. And there you go. You might, um, if, you've, uh, if you're reasonably familiar with uh, mechanics problems, you might have seen this combination of masses before. The product over the sum, this thing is known as the reduced mass, and it often comes up in, in problems where we have uh, two masses connected up, for example, uh, like diatomic molecules. Okay, so there we go. We know how the system is going to move. The particles are just going to accelerate with this constant acceleration. And we also know the tension in the string. I hope that's been uh, interesting and useful. I'm also planning to uh, make another video soon where I consider what happens if you have uh, friction between the string and the pulley. So I'll see you again soon to have a look at that.